Hi everybody, um, uh, offline and online, uh, just over lunch we uh, uh, talked about the, 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 the strangeness of doing this in, in a hybrid, Let's, I, I, I hope you know this works out, I, I don't have uh, that much experience with uh, the, the hybrid setup. Um, uh, my name is uh, Bernhard Rieder, I'm uh, an associate professor at the University of Amsterdam uh, and I work uh, in the Digital Methods Initiative. Uh, where I uh, normally do some research, uh, but also build a bunch of tools. Um, for example, uh, the, uh, the MIT CAT, uh, uh, the YouTube data tools. Uh, but today I'm not going to talk about one of the tools that I'm directly involved in, but in a tool that uh, two colleagues of, uh, of mine have, uh, have built and uh, continue to build, um, uh, Stein Peters and uh, Salhaga. And... Um, uh, I just want to give you a bit of an introduction to uh, what I consider a very fine tool, which I'm allowed to say because I didn't build it. Um, so, so what is what is Forcat, right? Um, uh, first, Forcat stands for Forcat Capture and Analysis Toolkit. So it's a recursive acronym, um, and it is a, uh, a capture and analysis toolkit that uh, allows you to well capture and analyze and, and, and analyze data from a whole range of uh, online sources. Um, and um, well, in a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you um, uh, the list. But the general idea of this tool is, um, in terms of its architecture, that it's something that you have to install on a server, right? So it's not something that runs uh, directly on your machines, but it's something that uh, you have to install on, uh, on a server or ask for access uh, on an uh, uh, existing uh, 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 instance. Um, and indeed, we do provide such an instance where you can ask for an account for today, I've actually prepared an account for this, uh, this workshop. Um, but in general, you can go to forcat.oilab.nl. Oilab um, uh, this is uh, um, the Open Intelligence Lab that uh, runs uh, a Forcat instance. And if you have a, a project that you know, um, uh, you know, would work well with uh, a forecast. You can ask for an account there. There are some limitations uh, in terms of data size and so forth. Um, yeah, if, if you're interested in, uh, for example, having your institution host um, their own instance, it's um, we provide a lot of um, installation guidelines and there's a Docker image and, and you know all these all these kinds of things. Um, Yes, but I think maybe um, uh, not to linger too long on the on kind of the basic technicalities. Um, I just want to just give you a, a first idea of uh, what kind of data Forcat can can deal with. So the, the basic idea in Forcat is a little bit that social media platforms are ultimately quite similar, right? Um, uh, a lot of them have um, uh, you know a basic set of units. For example, posts or messages, and then there's a threading function, right? Um, so you can, for example, reply to a tweet, or you can, you know, uh, uh, post something on Reddit and then reply to um, uh, uh, that, and so forth. So, so there's this basic structure, and and Forcat basically tries to um, uh, propose a number of kind of general purpose analytical tools for platforms that have this kind of structure, if you will. Um, and I don't know, I hope, I hope you can see that, you can read that. Uh, this is the current set of, um, of uh, sources that is supported. I can maybe zoom a little more. Uh, oops. So it was initially built to study 4chan, um, and this is why it's called 4cat. But uh, since it has um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, been uh, um, expanded with uh, quite a number of other tools, I think it, it, it stays um, relatively uh, true to its kind of initial um, goal of studying uh, like alt-right, alt-light uh, um, uh, platforms online. So, you know, it has uh, 4chan still, 8chan, the uh, successor to 8chan. Um, then it has stuff like Parler, Telegram, um, but it also has some larger platforms or larger, I don't know, but some, let's say, more mainstream platforms. Uh, it's basically Reddit, 
Tumblr, and it also supports now um, the V2 of, uh, of Twitter's API, which I think for some users uh, could, can be very, very interesting. Um, since the second version of uh, Twitter's API allows, this really has an academic track that's really quite generous. So it's up to uh, 10 million tweets per month, and those are historic tweets, which means uh, that unlike kind of the previous setup where you basically had to say, all right, either you buy data, right, historical data, or you say, well, I'm starting to capture now and everything from now on I'll, I'll, have, uh, I'll have there. There is now a historical archive. That, so there's still, there's also still a little bit of a, of a caveat um, uh, that of course does not contain deleted uh, 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 tweets, for example. So if you're studying, you know, kind of extremist content, for example, um, yeah, you will find that this that the, the archive is um, is uh, uh, is of course a bit sanitized. Um, then there are also uh, a bunch of um, <clears throat> other inputs uh, uh, that one can do. So um, particularly, there are kind of some basic data sets. For example, the Guardian Climate Change Archive. But you can also upload your own CSV uh, file to uh, Forcat, and then use Forcat facilities for analysis. We also have a, a plugin, um, which uh, I can well then maybe put the link into the chat, which in Dutch is called the Seeschimer. Uh, it's maybe not so easy to uh, to type, um, uh, but I'm going to share the link that uh, is for data capture of Instagram and uh, TikTok. So um, the way it works is you have to install that in your browser, and then it basically follows your um, surfing trajectory. And um, and uh, captures data in a format that is then compatible with Forcat. Um, it's just with those two platforms, it's not possible to directly integrate a scraper into a, into a, a Forcat or, or or anything else for that that matter. Um, you know, if, if there's some question, uh, please don't hesitate uh, at any point, right, to interrupt. Um, I don't know if I can open the chat here or something. Can I do that? Uh, okay, I'm just going to keep the, yeah, somebody put the, the, the link already in there. I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Um, okay, so, so so far a bit kind of the general um, uh, uh, setup of, uh, of Forcat. Uh, in a sense, you can use Forcat purely as a capturing tool and then export your data set. Or in a sense, you know, purely use it as an analytical tool import your data set from elsewhere. Uh, so those two uh, facilities are not necessarily uh, completely uh, connected. But all right, so, so that's uh, uh, just a, a general introduction. Um, I want to show you a little bit uh, uh, what you can do with um, uh, uh, Forcat. So normally, you know, when you start, uh, um, when you, you know, go to the, the URL, uh, you have a, a yeah, bit of uh, news and updates. Um, but you basically have the, have the possibility to either create a new data set or to look into past results. And those are data sets that either you created or other users on the same instance, um, uh, although they can choose to make their data sets private, um, uh, private right? So Forcat is, is attempting, re re still in the process uh, to be uh, as um, as uh, compliant with GDPR as uh, possible. And you probably know from your institutions that uh, data storage is a big, so is an important component in, uh, in, the, in the GDPR. So there are a number of facilities um, to, for example, keep sensitive uh, uh, data sets, you know, away from this shared pool of, uh, of data. But for example, on our instance here, we have, um, yeah, several thousand, I think it's, I want to say, almost 30,000 data sets. I mean, some of them are just, just uh, you know, kind of experiments um, uh, from all of these uh, sources. Um, here, those are my uh, um, uh, data sets that I just prepared for, um, for this um, uh, session today. Uh, uh, yeah, but I can then open and, and, you know, kind of continue working with them. But if I want to create a data set, I simply you know, choose one of those data sources here. I'm gonna just stick with Reddit. 
and then for each data source, the parameters are a little bit uh, a little bit different. Um, so what uh, what Stein and Sal have really tried to do with uh, fork or forecat is um, to be very verbose in the interface. So there are a lot of these like little you know uh, uh, little uh, um, hover uh, elements, uh, uh, and there's also there are quite a number of links to documentation for the data source. Right, so for example, Reddit, um, Reddit does have an API, but it has not a very good archive. So here, the data source is actually the push shift, the push shift um, uh, Reddit archive, which has you know its own idiosyncrasies. So if you want to kind of work with um, with uh, uh, this data, it really makes sense to spend some time looking, uh, um, you know, into the documentation, like you know what the parameters are, how they work, uh, and so forth. But here we could, for example, simply uh, select um, uh, a subreddit. Um, uh, maybe I don't know. Anti-work has been uh, has been uh, in the news uh, in the news lately, um, and then we can search uh, um, either in um, in uh, the uh, you know kind of a full thread, so in the messages, or simply in the subject of the thread. So we can, for example, say here um, I don't know what's uh, anti-work. Um, um, where were they? Fox News. There was a recent interview of one anti-work moderator on Fox News who didn't, didn't, maybe didn't do so well. Um, and then we can um, say, okay, 1st of January until 31st of January. Uh, then there's a scope, right? Whether one wants replies or not. So yeah, all the, all, you know, for, for each one of those platforms, a number of uh, parameters. Um, by default, for cat hashes, Usernames, um, which is a kind of an unreversible, uh, it isn't really a cryptographic technique, but um, it's a way to replace usernames with unique values, right? Um, and then I can uh, uh, set the name here for my data set, anti work, and then create my data set, and then, yeah, something happens here on the on the right, um, not so sure whether anti work was uh, the best. Uh, the best choice. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big, uh, it's a pretty big uh, uh, subreddit. So uh, we'll see. But in any case, uh, since it's server based, um, you know, we could actually just leave it alone here and see. Yeah, um, uh, that's that's our running our running uh, uh, query. And at one point, we're going to get an alert uh, that um, that uh, a data has been has been retrieved. Um, Okay, so, well, this is gonna run, I'm gonna leave it running. Um, just gonna open another data set here, I've already prepared. Um, so this is a, also a Reddit, uh, a Reddit um, a data set uh, that I retrieved from uh, uh, a subreddit called uh, Menslib, which is um, a, a counterpoint to uh, the Manosphere, if you will, so it's a feminist ally uh, subreddit um, uh, so I didn't want to you know, kind of bother you with the usual alt-right uh, uh, drivel. Um, so I've chosen this one, um, and uh, the search query here was uh, feminist feminism with also a relatively short uh, short uh, time frame. Well, it's actually the whole year, but it's not such a big um, such a big um, uh, subreddit. Um, so here I've already run uh, a number of things. I think maybe I'm just gonna delete them here now. But okay, let's say you just captured your data set. You, this is what you arrive at, right? So, um, um, uh, Forecat is very verbose in terms of um, trying to keep trace of your decisions, right? So you're gonna see a lot of the modules, the analytical modules, they uh, explicitly um, uh, show you all of the parameters used. So you're kind of able to retrace the methodological chain that you, that you employed uh, to your, to your uh, data. Um, a lot of the um, uh, a lot, lot of different parts in the interface also have this um, a lens icon, which allows you to um, to open simply um, either the full data set or let's say part of the data set or kind of some operation that you've already done on the data set to get an idea. For example, which kind of columns are in that in that data. So here from uh, from Reddit, right, we have a timestamp, a thread ID, we have a body, the the, the thread has um, a subject, 
um, um, there's a URL, there's a subreddit, and so forth, right? So that's that's good. Uh, that's good uh, to know. Um, the way Forcat now functions is so. Okay, we have this spreadsheet in there. Every line in this case is a is a, either a post or a comment. Um, if this were a Twitter data set, every line would be a tweet. If this were a Fortran data set, every line would be a, a Fortran message and so forth. And everything is now being applied to, to this, right? To these uh, uh, data that are structured in, in this way. Um, there is a, a, um, a qualitative component to Forcat that is pretty new. It's called the Explorer, um, which is basically um, uh, a system for tagging data. So there's the possibility to create, I can show the annotations here. There's a, yeah, the uh, blue is not a, it's not a great color choice. I, I think that's going to change pretty soon. Um, but you can uh, create your own coding scheme here. Um, for example, here I created a, a variable that has you know, a drop-down variable, so it has ex uh, exclusive options. And then I can apply that to every unit in uh, in my uh, in my data set, and actually then uh, um, uh, save these variables back in my spreadsheet, and then I can, for example, quantitatively treat them. Right? Um, yeah. I mean, there are obviously other tools to work quantitatively with um, with data, but I think the choice was to um, to uh, integrate a basic uh, tagging or classification facility or annotation facility directly here in uh, in Forcat. But the main brunt of the tool, if you will, are um, what uh, the authors have called analytical processors, or simply processors. And these processors, um, well, there's a certain abstraction to it, but what they, what they normally do is they take something as input and create an output. But it's not necessarily that all input is the original data set, right? So you can, for example, say, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm treating the original data set in a certain way, then I get an output that's, for example, a filtered data set with a subquery, and then I, I use that as an input for the next, the next thing, right? Um, so what you can see very often here in the interface are these kind of um, uh, icons here that are a little bit like a tree, and they say, you know, what comes after this processor? What does this processor allow for, right? It, it makes the tool... Uh, the learning curve maybe a little bit higher because it's it's not all methodological steps are just like one click and then you get an output but you have to you know combine a series of step steps but it also makes it much more flexible so here we have a pretty long list of processors right so those are processors each one of those um, there are here a number of presets that are combinations of processors. We also sometimes call them recipes. Um, we can, for example, say, okay, I want to generate a monthly histogram. And I'm just going to run that now. Uh, which data set is that? Yeah, that's a small, it's a small, unfortunately. Um, so I, I just ran monthly histogram, which basically gives me, well, a frequency count of posts per month. And you see, kind of this line here was added to um, uh, basically the overview at the, at the top. And I can, for example, now open this, and it's an SVG file. And, and this is now within this subreddit, right? So many messages um, per, per month. So that's one of the very basic things that one can do with, um, with uh, um, uh, Forcat, uh, is, for example, just count, count posts. Um, the way I would do that without a recipe, so I'm going to delete that, would actually be to use a count post. Here I can, for example, say, no, I, I actually want to do it, you know, per week. I run this processor. But now there's no graphic here because I, I, I didn't use um, a, a preset. I use the full processor, but I can now click here on more, and I can now kind of convert this to uh, something else. For example, to a histogram. And now I have my weekly 
my weekly overview, right? And 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 a lot of uh, a lot of the things here uh, in um, uh, in uh, um, Forecat work this way, right? So you, you build these um, kind of like um, yeah, like foldings of um, of um, um, modules or uh, or uh, processors. Um, a lot of these modules work with all of the data sources, but some are a bit specific, right? And that's, there's a bit of a discovery process. Um, what I want to maybe show you a little bit are some of the more advanced features. Um, so maybe there's network generation and stuff like this, but um, I'm not going to venture into that on this computer. Um, but we can, for example, look at whether there are any images here in this, um, in this post. I'm going to do this by, oops, where are the top images? Here. Right, I'm going to look for the top images that are linked in this data file. So the processor is going to look for uh, image URLs whether they are, um, you know, particularly metadata items, as would be the case in Twitter, or uh, whether they are simply um, uh, uh, URLs there. Um, and we can now, so, it, you know, it found a bunch of, um, oops, I downloaded that, I can look at it like this. You know, it found, like, in this data set, what, 10, 10 images, or 10, 10 image URLs, can download them. Um, that was, I think, an item. Yeah. So it's in the column item. Download them. Yeah, a couple of images. And then again, right, I have, a, I have the next step. And now I could, for example, submit these images to Google's Vision API. Or I can create an image wall, which is, yeah, the simplest. Um, probably the simplest uh, way of, um, of looking at them. All of this obviously uh, takes much longer if you have a really large data set, right? And, and that's a bit the, the problem with tools like this is that they, they are very general purpose, uh, which means that sometimes, yeah, you get into, into trouble simply because maybe your data set may be just too big and it, it proposes a pro processor that you could in theory use, but your computational resources are not enough, right? So there's also a bit of an experience uh, learning curve here. Yeah, so we made a image wall. Here we have a bunch of these, these images. Is that okay so far? Yeah? The... Mm -hmm. This image wall or using Google Vision or using Google Plus, you can only use that with the data set that you have um, as an output from Pocket, or one can upload, uh, you know, upload uh, something and then run. Yeah, absolutely. So if you have a list of URLs uh -huh. in a CSV. Uh, you can uh, uh, simply do exactly the same thing uh, as, I, as I just did, and it's gonna it's gonna open your CSV. It's gonna detect the columns in the CSV, and then you simply have to tell it in which column to look. Yeah. Um, and it can be both, uh, uh, you know, like simply a column where it's just the image URL, but it could also be, you know, like a bunch of text, uh, uh, and it's gonna look for you know kind of the usual uh, uh, extensions uh, uh, in the in, in that text. And then you can extract it, and you can either download it or, or you know, do all of those things uh, I just showed. Yeah. You also had a question. So um, with this uh, tool of uh, images, you can actually only gather the images. But can I have everything together, like a data set where I have the images and the text? Uh, yes. No. Absolutely. So, for example, if we look at um, at, um, I think you can write that back. I'm thinking about a project of one of my students who's uh, collecting data and read it. Uh, yeah. And sees interesting the images, but also. Oh, but also the text. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I have to say, I'm not sure. 
Um, if uh, if uh, Stein were here, he could probably tell us. Um, just gonna check here how the data set looks like. Yeah, you have the post ID, but not the text. So you have to do it separately. Yeah, yeah I think I think you, you have to do it separately. I, I yeah. I mean, the thing is, what you can do is, of course, uh, take the normal data set and try to eliminate or filter out everything that's not uh, every post that doesn't have an image, and and then you could do it that way, right? But you'd probably have to use the filter function. And you know, kind of filter it out that way. Um, that that would be my my best guess. Um, yeah. Well, I think that uh, particular really to break that piece analyzing is called pictures mm -hmm. because it's about visual representation. Yeah. So it's around communicating, and everybody's posting pictures when in the office and still dressed in the visual representation, but also in yeah, 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 the, the the text around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think with the filter function, it should be possible. Huh? That's the thing, right? Since it's a it's a bit of a general purpose tool, it doesn't have per se like like one function for everything. So very often you have to kind of like think of a way to, you know, like look at your data. How does the data look like? Could I maybe use a filter to uh, to get to the result uh, I, I want to? Yeah, exactly. And in a moment I'm gonna give you a, a login. But yeah, I mean so this is also a, a, a function uh, uh, of um, of uh, Forcat uh, working with images, um, you can obviously just download them here, right? Um, so I'm just going to close those processors here as results. Um, the 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 next thing I want to show you real quick is what's probably the most advanced part of um, um, uh, Forcat, and that is uh, uh, there are a whole, there's a whole series of natural language processing. Uh, capabilities um, in Forcat, uh, um, some of it uh, uh, based on machine learning. Um, yeah, so so if you use these kind of functions, um, it really makes sense to also look a bit into the libraries that are used. You know, inform yourself. So just to give you an example, uh, um, Forcat has a has a topic modeling um, uh, facility. So it uses uh, like the classic. Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, classic topic modeling uh, uh, algorithms, um, and and they have all kinds of epistemological limitations and problems, right? Me personally, I, I I'm very hesitant, you know, to use topic modeling outside of you know very large data sets and then with a very specific goal. Um, but the tool can do it, and 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 there you really have to do due diligence, right? And really say, like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm gonna. Um, you know, I'm going to really inform myself of what these kind of tools propose. But there are also a lot of uh, um, uh, much simpler things in, in here. And most of them um, are based, and, and that's something, yeah, I think maybe in the future we're going to change some of the nomenclature here. Um, uh, it's based on tokenization, right? So the way uh, uh, we start the NLP process normally is to tokenize. And that means uh, to transform uh, a series of words into uh, basically a vector of words or a um, you know, formalized collection of, uh, of words. And you can see here the, the tokenized processor then has five other things that it leads to, you know, word embedding models, so it's both, uh, uh, both uh, word to vec and fast text, um, TF-IDF topic models, and a basic... Um, uh, frequency counts. I just want to show you how that how that looks like. Um, and, and here, you know, we have much more, many more options than than before, right? So it's really a bit uh, advanced. Tokenization here, you can um, select. For example, let's say you have split up your data set into weeks. You can say, oh, I want to keep that that split, right? I want to keep my data set in these kind of buckets, right? Um, let's do that maybe here for a month. I'm gonna keep it in a in a in a month bucket. Um, yeah, that's the tokenizer that is being used. Language. Uh, this is English. Um, yeah, and then there is quite a number of things that one can uh, one can do here. Stop words, ex exclusions, and so forth. I'm just gonna run this here. This is uh, again a small data set. Yeah. 
And now I could do a whole bunch of things. For example, I can say, uh, okay, I would like to understand how, like which words were the most prominent um, during, you know, this year per month, right? I kept, I, I, I selected here a, a month bucket and I could do that, for example, over, uh, via TF, uh, TF-IDF, uh, which is a particular kind of frequency count. Term, term frequency, inverse document frequency is a classic uh, information science uh, thing. I'm going to explain in a second how that, what, what that is, but um, yeah, just going to run it. Vectorizing. And then I can say, okay, I want to do something with it. I'm going to build a rank flow diagram. I'm going to go just show you the result and then, yeah, and then something like this happens here. Um, oh, yeah, it's not so beautiful. I'm going to run another one. Oops. No. So. Yeah, then you get something like this, right? Um, so, so. This is a little bit different than a pure frequency count. You can also do pure frequency counts, but this is TF-IDF, which means that um, um, it's an attempt to show what is specific in a particular time frame, right? So it's a, it's a bit of a compromise or a balance between pure frequency of word and you know its originality or its um, kind of overrepresentation in this time frame. Um, yeah, this data set uh, is, it doesn't have, it's, it's a bit too small to make this really interesting, but you can see here that uh, uh, this is a quite, um, quite interesting uh, uh, yeah, visualization um, that one can quickly use, you know, to inspect um, uh, change in language uh, over, over time. I, I think it's probably in terms of processors. I already showed you maybe a bit a bit more than uh, than uh, uh, it really makes sense uh, to um, to show. Uh, what I would like to invite you is actually to connect to the tool and and try it out a bit for yourself. Um, uh, I have prepared a login that maybe I can. Uh, how can I make this bigger? Uh, yeah. So, so this account is not going to exist for a very, very long time, right? Shared at home. Ah, oh, is it not shared? Okay, I'm gonna put it in the chat. Okay. I don't know if everybody got so. So the thing is, if if you want to continue using the tool, um, you will have to apply for your own account. Um, uh, but for today, I think it's fine to use uh, to do to use this. Maybe even during the week. Uh, I don't know if there are some projects that are going to use Forcat. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, you can use this um, this uh, account. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, you, you can, for example, try out creating your own data set. Uh, or um, uh, use one of the past results, you know, to, to get a look at uh, uh, what's um, what's in there. If you create a new data set, I would <coughs> advise, you know, I would actually, maybe not advise you, I would, um, I would uh, politely ask you to, uh, to not do something huge, right? Um, so if you want to, for example, uh, get the data set for uh, anti-work for all mentions of work since inception. That's going to take an hour to run, right, Just, or, or longer, right? So there are some limitations here. Um, if you're interested in using Twitter, um, you have to bring your own API token, right? Um, uh, it's now really quite easy to get an API token through the new academic track. We have done this with our students in the digital methods course in, in Amsterdam. Um, we've asked them to apply for an API key 
and you know if you select here you know you get the you're asked for the, the token here um, but it's no longer possible to provide one token for everybody right so that's that's not how the academic track works um, No, so somebody asks, uh, um, no, today you can use, you, you can simply go um, to the, the address here, forcatoilab.nl, and use my login. But in the future, if you want to continue um, uh, using Forcat, yes, please apply to get an account. There's a good chance that you'll, you'll get it. <laughs> How to do it in the future? There is a link. So if you if you log out here, you can you have a request access here in the at the bottom left. So yeah, you can you basically have your name, email. How did you hear about Forcat? <laughs> yeah, very important. Uh, and then you can apply for. Um, you can get uh, uh, access. No, it's free. But the thing is, so this is this is what um, this 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 instance is hosted by us, right? So so we have a server somewhere um, that uh, that uh, uh, has an instance of Forcat installed, and we have limited resources, right? So um, uh, yeah, we. Approve requests as long as our resources are sufficient. But if you have an institution, you can go to your, you know, to your tech support unit department, you know, and you can say, I would like to have Forcat, and they can install it for you on on one of your servers. But as is, it's free. But there's limitations to, for example, some. Uh, 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 um, the some some data sources have have, have limitations. Sorry. Uh, so Can you. Share the login stuff again. Oh yeah. It's here. Can you read that? Is it as bigger? Oh, it's really. Oh, it's so small. Oh my god. Hmm? Oh, oh, thank yeah. you. Oh. Uh, I tried to install the forecast like locally, but uh, I didn't. I didn't know how to set up the whole application. And I would like to ask if uh, if it supports streaming data from uh, Twitter and Reddit because like they have the streaming API and. Uh, I don't. I, I was. I was not sure if the forecast for can handle like streaming data or big data sets, because here oh, we yeah. use like uh, we process like weekly kind of millions of of tweets. So we, we are looking for new tools to automate the whole process. And I think forecast can the analytical part of forecast. We can use it. Like it, it's amazing. But the data collection uh, part, I'm not sure if uh, it can handle the volume we are used to do here in DAPI. So, so I think it depends, right? So, so um, we have a tool called uh, DMIT Cat that um, uh, is really built on the streaming API, and um, we're currently kind of thinking how to fuse that with Forcat, but it's a non-trivial problem. Where it, it, there is a chance that we'll add the, the V1 API to, um, to Forcat, but that's going to go away, right? So um, uh, uh, it's, it's pretty probable that it's not going to continue. In terms of, in terms of uh, uh, size, right, the, 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 the volume here, I think, is not so much, a li or the limitation of uh, here is not so much the uh, Forcat, right? So Forcat is, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is a tool that can handle, yeah, um, uh, I mean, in the hundreds of millions of, of tweets, no problem, but how to get them in there, right? And the V2, the academic track, is limited to 10 million tweets per month, 
right? So uh, uh, that's that's probably your limitation here. Um, it, it's it's a bit of a question, right? What's the like at this point where to go? Is it better to go via the streaming API, which means V1, right? Which has a much more complicated uh, uh, application process, uh, where it's a good chance that you're not going to get access um, at this point in time. It's a, it's a bit of a conundrum. So I, I don't have a good answer for you. Um, but the problem, I think, is not so much the software, uh, but uh, um, yeah, like like which which API track you want to go to. And uh, if if we, we already have the data set, can we use some custom data set to you know, to to download from our database, then use the forecast processing API? API is on the, the, the show it today. Because we'd, yeah, lo we'd love to, to use the image processing we have there, and the text processing, it would be like way easier than we already have uh, uh, right now. Uh, in what format do you have? Uh, do you have your data? Uh, we can export the CSV or database. Uh, as I just want to know if the, we can like upload a custom, ah, yeah, custom as CSV upload. So we, I mean, there, there are a number of, um, of, of like, like imports that are already there. So for example, Facebook data uh, via, via CrowdTangle and stuff like this, right? But then you can also uh, import CSVs. Um, so, so that in any case works. Uh, uh, and, and the things you just have to make sure that, that you know, there are a certain number of um, uh, header rows there, and then you can just add as many as you want. Um, we also, so TK, uh, 4CAT is also interoperable with TCAT, so they can, they can export and import data in both directions. Um, yeah, no, so it's absolutely possible. Um, I mean, if you have tens of millions, there could be a problem with if the CSV file gets too big, but no, I, I don't think so. Uh, no, I, I think that should be, that should be fine, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, I'll I will definitely try it uh, when we come back to the to the processing. I'll share it with my team because it's amazing too. It's amazing too. Yeah, thanks. Um, I mean, so for example, I, I have here a data set. Oh yeah, I see you already. There's already, <laughs> it's already uh, a data sets being created. Uh, I think um, I, I favorite it, for example, here at Twitter, that's the Bolsonaro that's, um, uh, an example for a Twitter set here uh, that's retrieved with uh, the V2 of the of the API and um, yeah, I mean I have to say it really works. Uh, it really does work uh, quite uh, quite quite well. We've got a rank flow. Uh, Bolsonaro. What's what's that? The the Brazil is certainly at least one Brazilian in this room. No, well, Shana, of course. No. Oh, yeah, sorry, uh, I'm Brazilian. What's the what's the key? What what's that? What's that sign here? Oh oh, it's so small. That that looks like a key. This one here. It's, the data set is full of this. Yeah. And the Ah, oh, so you think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mistake. Okay, that could be it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, hmm, that's an interesting uh, uh, thing. I wanted to ask. You started from like that. These are the platforms that have, that are kind of thread based or kind of conversational. Mm -hmm. Of like, like somebody says something and then people either reshare it or respond to it. But are there like we didn't talk about this at all? in terms of like doing something to the data that allows us to look at like are there any presets that mm -hmm. do the like give you some sort of an overview of this I don't know the conversational architecture or whatever else? Yeah. Um, I'm just looking, I think that's not for this data set. Um, just opening the Reddit one again. Oops. So I mean, in the in the in the data itself, right? When it's captured, you can basically see the structure 
by looking at uh, oh yeah, sorry, here we have just too few. I need a bit more uh, here. Um, mm -hmm. I think this could depend on the platform, right? And yeah. Also the, 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 the uh, what is available there because in some of the data you may not have these old names Patrick, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, so the I think the threat structure now here it's not visible. I made a, a small Tumblr um, link mm -hmm. and it has a column called is reblog, so that but it's says false for most. So does that mean that it hasn't been reblogged or? Yeah, I think so. So I'd, 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 I'd probably have to investigate. The entire database is of things that haven't been reblogged once. Sounds not true. I, I, I'm gonna, I, I can write that down. So. I'm sorry, I know that you didn't make this and I'm asking all these very precise questions. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, I mean, it's, it's great because this is then, then stuff that, you know, I could, I could hand over to uh, I mean, for example, here in the Reddit data, you can see that in the data. Oh, I did find some two truths. So, like two things out of 300 were reblogged. These, these were quite true. recent. I did two weeks. I did two weeks, two weeks of a hashtag just because I didn't know and he said not to make big databases. I didn't know how many. Like yeah, I, I have to. I have. I would have to investigate. Um, um, it's also so that the data sources sometimes there are changes, and it's not always um, necessarily uh, instantly up to date, right? Mm -hmm. um, normally, you have here the thread metadata. Oh, but there is oh too many requests. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, I click too often. Um, and the thread metadata normally that's uh, where you can then look at the thread structure. But the thing is, there's no, there's currently no like like visualization tool for that. I think that's probably going to be part of the explorer, um, but it's it's completely new. The explorer is only was only added like this month. Um, So I think what, what we could imagine maybe is, is that the Explorer would then add the thread structure here. I mean, I have to say currently it's still quite, it's, it's, it's 90% a quantitative tool, right? So um, um, it was particularly used uh, in this like large 4chan threads to look at the emergence of language over time and, and less kind of the conversational structure. But I think, yeah, it's, it's really something that would, would make sense, for example, here to have that, like where you can actually see the data itself. Um, yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, is, there any, is there any, like, uh, previous, I don't know, uh, research that used the uh, forecast so that we can also... Uh, yes, I think there is. Um, um, so Forkhead is pretty new, so there's not that much yet. I think a good place to look, for example, is the, the Digital Methods Winter School and Summer School Wiki. So a lot of the projects there have been using Forkhead. Um, uh, if you look on Google Scholar, I think there are also a couple of papers out already. Oops. Yeah, for example, here is one, um, but I said, yeah, it's relatively new. The, the Open Intelligence Lab has a bunch of stuff on their web page. Um, uh, 
So a lot of these papers here have been have, have been relying on um, on uh, forecasts. For example, uh, uh, this one, Internet Hate Machine, that uses forecast. Uh, Dutch Junk News on Reddit and 4chan Paul, that's based on forecast. So there's a bunch of here on the on the Oil Lab. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna leak, uh, I'm just gonna paste that into the. Okay, there are some other questions here. Is there a support community forum? Yes, uh, we have created a, uh, sorry for the caps, uh, we've created a, a, a Facebook group and our subreddit. Uh, it's not very active uh, for now. Um, but then there is particularly the GitHub, the GitHub page, where there's a lot of question answering going on. Uh, for cat GitHub. Yeah, so for example, here are like open issues or questions are being posted uh, posted here. Um, okay, uh, uh, are there images in those data sets? Uh, where are they? Well, it depends on the data set, right? Um, the one sorry. you were showing, you were showing uh, a data set and I was wondering if there are images. Uh, you mean the Bolsonaro one? Yes. Uh, quite. I mean, quite probably. I didn't check. I can check. It's not that big, so I'm. Um, it's, yeah, it's half a gig. Let's let's try it. So here, I would. I would. What I would do is, I would look for top images. Uh, and add the extracted image URL. I'm gonna gonna try and run it. Now we're of course hammering the server uh, from uh, yeah a lot of different directions. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see, but there are certainly images in there, right? Uh, there's no doubt about it, probably too many. It is, as you were saying before, like someone in the room asked if they're not together, right? So you have this, as an example, you have this text about Bolsonaro and then you have, now you are checking for images, but they're not together. Well, I mean, you in the data, so in, in the case of Twitter, if you look, for example, here at the Twitter data, you know, you can, for example, see that uh, the image URL, so you could filter the posts that have an image here, and then you have the text here, right? So you do have them together. Um, yeah, and you could analyze it like this. Okay, sorry, I, I'm really a newbie here. So you said also that we had to ask Twitter permission to get the something. So in order to get data from Twitter, um, so so Forcat cannot pro, cannot play the role of intermediary between you okay. and Twitter. So that's not possible. But uh, Twitter has uh, an academic track for data access. Right? And that um, is, is here. Oops, I accept like a lot of things. And, and here you can actually, um, you can apply for access. And it's actually not very complicated. So we've done it with our students. You have to present like your university affiliation. What they really like to see is a personal page where you are on your university's official page, like something like this. They, they really like that. And then they ask for a description of your project. Um, and then they decide, you know, they, whether they're going to give you the access or not. Um, we've had good success in the past. Uh, and um, uh, when you get that access, you get a token. You get like, you get a, 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 a string of characters, right? Um, that's like a password. And that you can put into Forcat. And then you can get up to 10 million tweets per month uh, with, uh, wow. with uh, yeah, and you're not, <clears throat> you're not sharing, and it's also historical, right? Yeah, and last question, sorry. I saw YouTube uh, there, but 
but not in the data set. Like we cannot import from YouTube, but we can use YouTube in the forecast. Yeah, absolutely. You can go to the YouTube data tools. Um, it was not on the list. I mean, I no, no, it's not. So, so it's, it's because the problem with YouTube is that the access to YouTube is, is, is uh, so there's no academic research track. Uh, there's a lot of complications with that. And um, uh, the, um, the way to handle this is to use a different tool called the YouTube Data Tools, which I can tell you much more about because that's, that's a tool that I make. Um, and, and this tool has a, has a very, very high um, uh, uh, a level of data access, right? So you cannot get anything like this yourself. Um, if you apply for data access at YouTube now, you get like 10,000 tokens per day. This has 50 million per day. Um, but we can't integrate that into Forcat because we cannot move it from the URL. Because if we move it from the URL, there's a risk that we will lose this super token. Um, yeah, sorry, it's all, uh, it's, it's all uh, platform uh, navigation. But here you can, for example, say, you know, you want to you wanna search for videos, you know, you can export that as a, as a CSV and then import it into uh, Forcat and analyze it there or in any other you know, program. Um, the thing is, we we didn't do a we didn't do a, a tutorial on the YouTube data tools because there's a video that basically says everything that's to say about the YouTube data tools. Well, um, well, a bunch of stuff, but yeah, but that's that's a way you can do it. Basically, going through, like, downloading the file here, importing it, and then yeah, Forcat has a, a couple of really nice analytical modules uh, that uh, that you can then use. Oh, TikTok and Instagram plugin. Yes, sorry, I have to. I'm not. I couldn't connect my computer, so I am a bit. Uh, I'm a bit uh, like uh, fighting here with the PC. Uh, Control T. Ah, no, I I know did not. Okay, no, I, I, I can't think of this. Sorry, I, I will have to look it up. Yes, so that's that's the famous Seeschuimer, and here's the link. So th this is this plugin I talked about before that you can use to collect uh, TikTok and Instagram uh, uh, data. So we, we've used the, the TikTok uh, uh, in the Digital Methods Winter School. Uh, I think a bunch of groups actually didn't your group use it. No, uh, it wasn't about TikTok, but I'm going maybe to use for a project here. Yeah. I think it was swollen. It means uh, it, it schaim is foam, so it means it gets the foam, the foam off of the waves of the sea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I was not involved in naming this, um, but yeah. Um, well, I think um, I, 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 I caught a very short proposal uh, part um, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, Catherine's talk, right? And she said she talked about uh, exactly that, uh, that, that question. Um, well, first of all, is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a terms of service document, is that, is that a legally binding document? So if you go, for example, by precedent in the US, there have been two rulings that um, that uh, uh, web scraping is not illegal and you know um, uh, so the terms of service don't hold up but I think it, it's it's really the question whether you want to you know whether you want to uh, test test that right um, 
uh, there's a good chance that the Digital Services Act uh, uh, will provide leeway for research. I mean, so for example, I wouldn't hesitate, right? But I'm also, uh, you know, I have tenure. Uh, um, uh, I'm not going to get fired. Uh, well, but, how did you, you know? send an email they're never going to reply to you? Okay. Yeah. That's the... The question is also, you know, like how do you publish it and so forth. So it's, it's a pretty nuanced it's a pretty nuanced uh, uh, question, right? Whether, um, because for example, even if it's, you know, even, even if it's uh, not illegal, right? And, and the judgment wouldn't hold up, maybe your institution doesn't like getting letters from Instagram, for example, right? It happened to me when I did my PhD, I did research on Badu, yeah. and it was against the terms uh, and to do research without that. You know, making a participant in the first place because I was looking for participants and disclosing my 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 identity as a researcher, but I wanted them to give me permission just to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. and because I was sending out a lot of emails to potential participants, they blocked my account. Yeah. And I had emailed them to ask for permission, but they never replied to me. They didn't care, they just blocked my account, I had to open a new one. So yeah, but I mean that's 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 kind of research life in the post API age, right? I mean, Dean Freon is going to talk about that uh, tomorrow, I think, in in, uh, in 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 more in more detail. I mean, what what makes sense probably is to maybe not use your account. So if, if you get blocked, right, you you have another account, a research account, maybe you know something like this, and then. I mean, I, I don't see a, uh, I don't see a company like suing a researcher, right? I think the worst you can maybe expect would be something like a cease and desist letter. It's, it's, it's not a European construct, but um, uh, that's probably the worst you can expect. I, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really yeah. There's somebody shares a, a, a Francisco shares a, a, a temp mail account, you know. Um, but then, if you want to publish a paper in the end, right, you, you, you yeah. Exactly. Well, in terms of stating research, like, uh, you know, you have to have a research account. Mm -hmm. But uh, my own account is working better because I've been using my own account mm -hmm. before. So let's say it is trained. And Instagram were blocking uh, faster yeah. my research account, and so I just decided to to keep using my own because it was like a kind of normal activity from my account. So if you at least on Instagram, if you want to create a, a research account, you have to train the research account for Instagram to not block you that much. I mean, this plugin has has the the. I mean, so there there's, there are really compromises, right? There are um, advantages and disadvantages. But this plugin doesn't like automatically scrape, right? It follows your navigation, uh, which um, uh, means that there is probably less of a chance to get blocked because it doesn't hammer the surface, right? Um, yeah. But it, it also means that you get much less data than if you would scrape it with a bot, right? Uh, for example. So, yeah. I wanted to ask about the other data sets. Like initially, you showed like the what did you say, three thousand, thirty thousand, whatever hundred yeah. data sets. So, whose are they, and can anyone, like if let's say I ask for access tomorrow, right? And, then, mm -hmm. and you guys say yes, sure, go ahead. Do I see those as well, or am I seeing them now because I'm logging in with your? You're seeing them because uh, you're long. Lo no, uh, those that are not private um, are are visible to everyone, um, and then there's a facility to make the data set private, right? So you can create the data set, and then if you have the data set, um, it's. I have to check. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to I'd have to check, but you can make it private, and then it's not visible to to everyone. Yeah, I mean the thing is, 
it, it honestly it makes it if you work an institution it really makes sense to to uh, uh, install an instance somewhere there right you have much more control we use this a lot for like teaching for workshops um, and and yeah there's also limited resources mm -hmm. so especially if, if you think that you know the data is uh, is more sensitive it no, really it's actually hard I was thinking more like you know like could could somebody reuse someone else's data set instead of making a new one or in addition to making the new one to look at something and I, I mean I'm not sure how it would even work because most of these data sets are created by a, a hashtag or a subreddit mm -hmm. or you yeah. know, like so they're they're topical in itself but theoretically right you could you could see like how whatever is evident in all these other data sets from the same platform where it's yeah. ostensibly people are talking about something else but maybe they're also talking about whatever if you're interested in it like it's general enough thing, right? No, absolutely. I mean, if you want to, you can share. Absolutely. You can also, during installation, configure it, you know, in different in different ways. So if you say, you know, we have a team of researchers or we have a, a class, for example, and they would like to reuse the data set. No, that's absolutely possible, yeah. Um, and you can also, you can, for example, then, I mean, what you can do, for example, is delete a data set that you haven't made, and you can also not uh, delete the processor that somebody else has done, right? Um, so that you cannot do, but you can simply open a data set and add an analysis uh, uh, to that uh, data set. Um, yeah. I mean, those are some of these, like, multi-user issues that I think are, are going to become more, um, like, so, so this is now, this, this tool as is, was started a year and a half ago, so maybe two years ago, and it's really become a much bigger tool in, over the last year. So I think some of these like multi-user questions are really going to be, um, yeah, like will have to be addressed. Uh, I think in one way or another uh, in the future. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there are any other questions, uh, maybe. So this was basically, I mean, I can, of course, show more processors, but I, I, I do think there's already, there are quite a bunch of them. But if you just want to continue, try it out. Uh, um, yeah, whenever you've got a question that I can answer, hopefully. Ah, okay. Um, we're in the process, I mean, you can use it in a way that is GDPR compliant, right? If you install it on your own, uh, on your own server, but we are preparing an audit. So um, we're gonna, we're gonna have a lawyer look, look it through. Um, from our perspective, we think so, but we're not sure. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not a great, it's not a great uh, answer, but um, uh, GDPR has, has proven to be, um, uh, 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 yeah, really quite, uh, and really they quite could. Yeah, and, and, and something that um, you really need help, help with, right? Um, they're also, there's also the interpretation question, right? GDPR is not necessarily, um, um, you know, like there's a jurisprudence component to it that, um, yeah, and it's really something that's part of the development, but so far we haven't been able to do that. But it's really hopeful, really hope to do that before the summer to have a GDPR audit. Dun -dun. Oh, yeah, somebody shared the the uh, University of Michigan result on, on scraping that was uh, Christian Sandvik. But in the States it's different, right? Because the GDPR law applies for Europe and the States is much more similar. Well, but GDPR applies to European Union citizens. So if an American researcher, if there's European Union citizens in the database, mm -hmm. they should still be GDPR compliant. 
But I mean, it's still you are still right that it is different. There are laws are different, etc. But but yeah, and then I mean, I think there's a good chance that uh, this year we'll see the the. Um, uh, uh, the Digital Services Act, which will probably have new provisions for, uh, well, which certainly will have new provisions for research, which may then actually also lead to um, new best practices and, and stuff like this. I'm not sure where the Digital Services Act is now, but I think um, it's pretty close. I think it's already in Trilog, so... Sorry, the the uh, a while ago you mentioned that uh, there was a community a support community at GitHub. So it's this uh, link that you just posted. I'm also gonna, with the. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna share this thing here. So the GitHub that was uh, another tool. But if you look here, so here you have for the different tools that we make, the links to the GitHub pages, and also to the, here on the right to the Facebook and the Reddit communities. So for example, if you post a question on Facebook, we can answer it there. Thank you. GitHub normally is, is more for technical issues, and like user questions, more Facebook, but you know. But yeah, this is the this is the, the grant under which these tools are now being developed. So we have the super grant. Yeah, but there's quite there's quite a lot of documentation on on um, on GitHub as well, for example, for installation and stuff like this. Yeah, I didn't show you some of the network facilities, but in general, you can, for example, create uh, networks, um, uh, for example, you know, in a, in a Twitter between hashtags and users or between hashtags. So uh, kind of some of the standard stuff you can see here. Yeah, but this is basically, I think, what, what I had. Um, oh, what I can share. Ah, oh, I had that on the other computer. Some more addresses. That's also a video. Introduction to the processors.
there's a question. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So Elias says, um, for those who are going to import data into Forcat, there are some requirements in terms of columns and uh, date format. So you know, before you import a uh, uh, import um, import a data set from you know another source, they check out what these requirements are. You can see either Unix timestamp, date format, or this date format here. That's maybe something that we could improve, huh? But does it does it work for everyone the tool uh, yeah okay well sorry when when importing when importing a, a CBS file as you were saying and and someone also asked this before like is there a tick to make this data set private it's not here um, I have to check. I think you can do that afterwards. After, okay. Um, I'm not sure where though. Oh. Mm. Yeah, on the part, I have, I have to get back to you on that. I'm, I'm trying to uh, put that into our Slack, but um, I can't, uh, I can't connect to the internet. I do not know why. Um, yeah.
I was pretty sure that you could. But maybe it's a planned feature. <laughs> well, if you can't now, I, I'm going to say you will be able to pretty soon because I think this is really a necessary feature. Uh, but thank you, Bernard. Mm. Oh, yeah, thank, thanks.